So with that background, let's derive Hooke's law for a continuum. In a linearly elastic Hookean solid, the stress is linearly proportional to the Cauchy infinitesimal strain. So we can write that the components of the stress tensor Tij equal Cijkl times epsilon kl, where Cijkl are the components of the fourth order tensor of elastic constants. Just as we reasoned for the linear viscous fluid, this tensor has a total of 3 to the 4 or 81 components. However, because of the symmetry of the stress Tij and the strain epsilon kl, the number of independent constants would reduce from 81 to 36, which I think of as the number of constants in a 6 by 6 matrix relating the 6 com independent components of the stress tensor to the six independent components of the strain tensor. However, we can actually do better than that. If you recall from conservation of energy that the rate of work done by the stresses was given by the product Tij deij, or the trace of the product of the stress tensor with the rate of deformation tensor. Now recall that the rate of deformation tensor dij is also the strain rate, or epsilon ij dot, or d epsilon ij dt. So from this we can write dw dt equals tij d epsilon ij, or dw equals tij d epsilon ij. And now we can integrate this, substitute cij kl times epsilon kl for tij, integrate with respect to epsilon ij, and we'll get one half cij kl epsilon ij epsilon kl. Now if we see that this expression would be same if we switched the order of uh, epsilon ij here and epsilon kl here, which means that we should be able to switch the order of uh, ij here and kl here in this expression, And that leads us to the conclusion that Cijkl equals Cklij. So this additional symmetry further reduces the number of independent constants from 36 to 21. So you can think again of that 6 by 6 matrix relating the 6 independent components of the stress to the 6 independent components of the strain, but now that's actually a symmetric matrix. So this reasoning is also true for the uh, viscosity tensor Bijkl that we uh, derived for linear viscous fluids. But as with Newtonian viscous fluids, to simplify any further, we need to consider the material symmetry. Unlike fluids, many material symmetries are possible in solids. It's easy to imagine and think of solids that have different properties in different directions. Like muscle has different direction, properties along its fiber orientations, so do tendons and ligaments and other fibrous connective tissues. The simplest material symmetry is isotropy. So just as we did before for the Newtonian viscous fluid, we can write down a general form for an isotropic fourth order tensor, one that also satisfies the symmetry conditions that we just derived based on the symmetry of the stress and the strain and on the conservation of energy. So as we saw for the linear viscous fluid, we also see that the general isotropic expression has two material constants, lambda and mu. So we get Cijkl equals lambda times delta Ij delta Kl plus mu times delta Ik delta Jl plus delta Il delta Jk. Now substituting this into our linear expression for the stress-strain relation, we get, we get Tij equals Cijkl times epsilon Kl is equal to lambda 
times delta ij delta kl epsilon kl plus mu times delta ik delta jl times epsilon kl plus mu times delta il delta jk epsilon kl. And now we can see that these expressions simplify, so we get tij equals a lambda times delta ij and delta kl epsilon kl is epsilon kk, this kl turns this l into a k. Delta ik delta jl times epsilon kl becomes epsilon ij, k becomes an i, l becomes a j. And similarly, delta il delta jk times epsilon kl becomes an epsilon ji. Since epsilon ij equals epsilon ji, because it's symmetric, symmetric, we get lambda delta ij epsilon kk plus 2 mu eij. Or writing this in direct notation, the stress in an isotropic Hookean elastic solid is lambda times the trace of E times I, the identity tensor, plus 2 mu times epsilon. So this is Hooke's law for an isotropic elastic solid. Lambda and mu are elastic moduli that are known as the Lame constants. Since strain is dimensionless, they have the same units as stress has. We can find the Lame constants in terms of uh, technical constants such as the Young's modulus and Poisson ratio, and we'll do that next time. Writing the constitutive law out now in full for the isotropic Hookean elastic solid, we get the following. T11 is equal to lambda times epsilon 11 plus epsilon 22 plus epsilon 33. So that's the trace of E. T22 equals lambda times epsilon 11 plus epsilon 22 plus epsilon 33 plus 2 mu epsilon 22. And T33 equals lambda times epsilon 11 plus epsilon 22 plus epsilon 33 plus 2 mu times epsilon 33. And then the shear stress components, T23 is 2 mu times epsilon 23. T13 is 2 mu times epsilon 13. And T12 is 2 mu times epsilon 12. So you can see here that the, the modulus mu directly relates the shear stress to the shear strain. It's known as the shear modulus and often denoted by G which is another technical constant.